Thank you, Speaker. I rise to also contribute to this public interest debate and express um, the dismay that I think uh, the member for Strathfield and others have expressed in relation to the fact that there is very little about this public interest debate that actually is in the public interest. I think that it's very clear and very disappointing to see that we have seen today in the chamber actions that have demonstrated that the intention of the opposition as a result of being put on the opposition benches is to punch down and attempt to whip up really offensive behaviour, behave in a way that demonstrates their insecurity, insecurity at the loss of their power and influence by trying to intimidate and impact on other members in the chamber. I think it's really important and I share solidarity with the member for Strathfield and the recognition that you could say that my family also worked in catering. My dad, as an international student, after he studied to be an accountant, actually decided that he could probably make more money starting a restaurant with his mates. And they used to enjoy going to the markets in Adelaide and buying the squid, which the Australian folks would buy as bait that was very, very cheap at that stage and have feasts as they were struggling to make ends meet in the restaurant industry. I myself also worked uh, you could say in catering as a hospitality staff person to pay my way through my studies. It's important to recognise, and I recall when I wrote an academic paper for the Court of Conscience Journal, journal at the UNSW, writing on the inequality of the pandemic uh, and the impact that it had, I wrote in that article in the conclusion, in my workplace, the New South Wales Parliament, most of the people who look like me and those who reflect the real diversity of our community are actually not those sitting in the chamber. They are the ones serving the food, cleaning the offices and keeping things moving day to day. The reflection that I would like to make on the comments made earlier by the Shadow Minister for Multiculturalism, former Minister for Multiculturalism, is the fact that we would do well in this chamber to reflect the diversity of the people that work in catering in this building. And it is a great pleasure to see after the election this year, that now when people make racist comments in this chamber, we can have a small mini caucus just outside, and it's not just the chamber looking to me, wondering whether I'll call the racism out. That is a credit to many, many people in the community who have got behind and backed in to ensure that our parliaments are starting to reflect the diversity of our community. But I would say that whether it's someone makes a racist joke or a racist flippant remark, that is still racism. And the racism sticks and it lingers. And it infects people's public perception. And in our role as members of parliament, we could and should hold our public perception strong. And it is for no member of this place to determine how we put ourselves forward as representatives in this place. And so while it might be all well and good for someone to stand up and apologise in this place, the impact that that racist remark has on that member long term into all the Google searches, all of the records, all of the discussions, and the impact it has on them and their community and their family is real. I knew this all too well, and I know that the member for Bankstown and I have discussed it before, because the main time we get a media scrum is when someone are racist pigs to us, basically. Then everyone's interested in knowing what we're saying. When the police trolled my Facebook page after I had been a member for a short period of time, and wrote the most disgraceful and disgusting things about my family, about my father and myself on my public Facebook page. For years after that, every time any media story would come up, anything would come up in any of the searches, it would come up saying the most offensive and vile things about my dad which were quoted in those media stories. You cannot take that back with an apology. That now lasts. And so I would urge every member of this place to think about what they are doing when they are saying it, but also to think about what they are taking away. Because in doing that, what you are doing is taking away people's ability to participate in this chamber as equals. You are taking away our ability to do and behave as we want to behave without us being tainted by the idea of whether we will be angry, whether we'll be enraged or we'll, whether we will be upset and hurt by the actions that are taken. And you'll note that the member for Strathfield, and he does a much better job than I do at it, and I have been very measured and very calm in this debate. Well, I can speak for myself only to say that my rage and my hurt at what was said in this chamber today is so strong. But if I come in here and yell, I will be further marginalised. And so I have to put on 
my nice and reasonable voice to face the racists that continue to try and stop us from participating in society.